Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to visit with It's Kayla and Kayla has a video called Abuse and Weight Gain, My Decision to Lose Weight. I listened to the first three or four minutes of this video and I just thought I want the venters to hear this one. I hope you enjoy. This is an impromptu video as you can probably tell by the state of my eyebrows, but um, I did not plan to make this video at all, but I really wanted to make it. I was inspired to make it. Um, I want to talk about how I gained all the weight that I did and why I decided to lose it. My first semester of college, there was this girl in my class that I just could not stop looking at. She was a bomb to me. She looked like Darlene Connor, and I love Roseanne. Roseanne was the type of show I could watch all the time. She looked just like Darlene. I could tell she played soccer and softball, la la la. She looked miserable every time I saw her, and I made it my goal to make her laugh. I would come into class with jokes, with pickup lines, and before you know it, we were kind of like in a clique, me and a couple other people. She was always sitting with us, but most of the time she did not talk to me. On the last day of that semester, I made a bunch of cookies for my friends because I was the type to always be baking something. That's just who I've been my whole life. And I made cookies and I passed them out to the teacher and my friends. And then she was about to leave. And I was like, wait, here are some cookies. And later I found out, like she said, she demolished the cookies. The next semester, she ended up being in one of my classes again. Towards the end of that semester, we started dating. Um, I was 17 when I met her, 18 when we were dating, had my first kiss at 18. She was my first kiss. She was my first love. She was my first everything. Hindsight is 2020. So um, I didn't realize that at the beginning of our relationship, it was really not healthy. We didn't eat together for the first couple months of our relationship. And then that took a dramatic change. Basically, I'm just gonna say it like this, I learned how to binge from our relationship. It got to the point where we would always, always just go to Kroger. We would get a big old pack of cupcakes. Um, she is actually officially the one that nicknamed me Cupcake. I still identify with it, so I keep it around. But um, we would eat cupcakes. We would just smash on all different kinds of stuff all the time. Um, so we went from never eating together to eating all the time together, and we both gained weight together. So a lot of times this happens with young couples when somebody gets pregnant in the relationship, right? There's a little sympathy weight and you guys both end up kind of getting a little bit heavier together while you're getting ready to give birth. In this situation, she meets her significant other. It's kind of the girl of her dreams. It reminds her of a character from a popular sitcom show, right? And all of a sudden they're eating together all the time. If you've ever had a situation like this where your significant other just ate so much and you found yourself getting into bad habits, please share. But we were happy. I thought we were happy. We, you know, we got the new relationship chubs. So we both got chubby. Um, I was I was already heavier than she was, so I was more than chubby. But we got chubby. Around this time that we both gained weight, that's when little things started to happen that should have clued me into the fact that this relationship was not safe for me to be in. She never wanted me to go out with my friends. And at this point, I just started going out and partying and having my own life because I was in college. So um, I started going out and doing things and she was not having it. Um, a little bit after that, the physical abuse started. This was a very, very abusive relationship, um, verbally, emotionally, physically. So this, this video went from kind of happy, I'm meeting the girl of my dreams, we've got a little bit of a bad habit with eating too much and binging on cupcakes and stuff, and all of a sudden we're talking about isolation and control, which again, does happen to people in relationships. In a relationship like this, where this is the first person that, that um, Kayla has been with, I don't know the situation with the other girl. I don't know if that was the first girlfriend for the other girl, right? So I don't know that situation or that dynamic, but I do know this, that if all of a sudden you're in a relationship and all of a sudden you go hang out with a group of friends, I could see how that could get certain people jealous. I was always the type that was okay with my wife having friends. And many of us are like that, where we want our significant other to have friends. But I think we've all met people that definitely don't like that vibe. If any of you have had a scary situation, like it sounds like this kind of was, you know, definitely let us know. When you're 17, 18, 19, 20, you're still finding yourself. 
and you're still developing as a person and I wasn't able to do that. One aspect of the abuse that I did not see coming and I did not know was even abuse was that she controlled everything that I put into my mouth. And not to say that she didn't want me to be fat and not to say that she starved me. It was the exact opposite. She fed me all the time. Um, she would make sure that I had a bunch of food, a bunch of junk food. We would go to the drive throughs all the time. She would go to the donut place around here and get me like six donuts at a time and made sure that I ate them all. Now, I'm a little skeptical. I got to be honest with you. And here's the reason why. Have you ever heard one person's side of the story and you can't help but think, hey, that story sounds reasonable. But then when you hear the other person's side of the story, all of a sudden you get some questions. Number one, is there really a situation where one person can force another person to eat? I don't know if that's really happening here. If you guys are a little skeptical of this story too, let me know down below. One thing I'm not doing is I'm not saying Kayla's not being honest. What I'm simply saying is I find that hard to believe. I could not imagine being in a relationship where somebody's staring you down, hoping you finish that third or fourth donut. And by the way, don't finish that third or fourth donut. She was feeding me and not feeding herself. She told me point blank, you have to be the fat one in the relationship. It got to the point where I was starting to feel very uncomfortable in my body. And she told me that if I ever lost weight, that she would break up with me. And you may be wondering, what the fuck? Like, you should have been like, fuck you, bye. When you're in an abusive relationship, when you're being manipulated, when your self-worth is like nothing, the last thing you want to do is lose what you think is the only person that's there for you. Meanwhile, I had alienated all of my friends. I alienated all of my family. It was just me and her. And a box of donuts. So sometimes these things do happen. You're dating somebody and all of a sudden you tell your buddies, I can't hang out. And pretty soon you're not hanging out with any of your friends or family. So these little things with isolation and relationships, they definitely happen, if not to us, to people we know. It has happened. I still find it amazing that she didn't just eat less. Is this one of those things where maybe at first she was eating a lot? And because her girlfriend never pushed back on it, she got into bad habits. And now in retrospect, she's trying to put it on the ex-girlfriend. And again, the only reason I say this is, you know, as well as I do, if we had that ex-girlfriend here and we're interviewing her, she would tell you, does this story sound a little made up? And we would all have to question. So again, I apologize if I'm coming across the wrong way, but tell me I'm not the only skeptical one here. And I thought that was all I had. I didn't think it was going to get any better. And sometimes, I mean, to be honest, sometimes I didn't think that she would ever let me leave. So I kept eating and I kept gaining weight and um, she kept not eating. So I'm done talking about the relationship, but basically all you need to know is that it was three years long. We were engaged at one point. We talked about kids. It was very, very, very abusive. Um, I didn't think that I would be able to get out. Now, I ended up getting out in the form of the Disney College program. And uh, one of my friends was applying, so I applied too, so that I could get out of the situation that I was in. When I was at Disney, I was very depressed because, you know, I had just come out of this abusive relationship and we had still been in communication because, like, we were still dating when I, like, left. And that's when I was online looking at the L word stuff. And then I found auto straddle and I found a camp relationships over. But the one thing that was not over was the pattern of disordered eating that I had developed in that relationship. I developed an addiction to the food. Um, yeah, she was making me eat the food and she wanted to fatten me up like she was like a witch and I was Gretel. But I started to need the food. I started to eat it for comfort. And so that didn't stop after the relationship. Like after the relationship ended, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go back to normal life and not eat six donuts at a time. No, I had to keep eating six donuts at a time because I don't know. <laughs> so she still has half of a video there. And I urge you to go to It's Kayla's uh, channel 
and and check out the rest of that video. I'll link it in the description below. But again, that's one of those things where you have to say, okay, let's take the girlfriend out of the picture. You're still eating that fifth and sixth donut, Kayla. And then on top of that, that must mean that even when you were with your girlfriend, there came a point where she's no longer forcing donuts into your mouth. There had to ultimately come a point where you were gladly accepting them. And you also had to notice, like you do, that your girlfriend wasn't eating the same amount of donuts as you. So this is one of those that, yeah, she probably got you into this bad habit. But I think this is one of those where I don't know if I can blame that on your ex-girlfriend. One of the things that I can blame on her is that you should never be abusive to anybody in any way, shape, or form. And if she was cruel, mean, or abusive to you in a painful, physical way, shame on her and I'm sorry you went through that. I'm sorry that a lot of us are dealing with weight gain, but I think there's an easy way where many of us, not all, but many of us could solve it. And it starts with getting moving. So with that being said, go get your shoes. Let's go for a walk. Good morning, venters. Oh my God, it feels so wonderful this morning. When the weather changes, all of a sudden it becomes our friend. And if we battle through the tough times, walking as much as we can when the weather is not necessarily the easiest to deal with, and then all of a sudden the weather changes to something we can deal with, we can take that movement that we that we gained and earned during the tough times and we can make it that much easier during the good times what do you what do you mean jesse you're babbling this morning i'm always babbling in the morning i'm half asleep but check this out if you're able to walk for an hour during the hottest part of the summer mala what's that mean when it starts to cool down it means that you're going to walk your normal hour and you're going to realize holy moly i'm not sweating my gourd off I think I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna do a little extra credit. And I'll tell you what, I'm fired up about this weather change. We had a hundred and what, 20 days in a row of hundred plus weather here in Arizona. It was, a, it was a record this year apparently. And it felt miserable every single day, including yesterday or including the day before yesterday. And all of a sudden we have a situation where the next uh, dozen days or so, we're supposed to be in like the 90s. Maybe a, a couple of degrees into the early 100s, but I'm telling you, all of a sudden, these uh, 45 minute walks or half hour walks, all of a sudden, they're not so challenging. All of a sudden, you're not sweating in places that you hate sweating. Because let's be honest, when the human body gets to sweating, oh my God, it can be pretty miserable. So what does this make me feel like? When the weather cools down, it makes me feel like I'm on top of the world. It makes me feel like if I'm reaching out to brand new viewers, it's not so darn difficult to get them to put their shoes on. I have a feeling that every year during the summer, I'm probably gonna see a dip in activity when it comes to people wanting to do a walking challenge. Cause who in the right mind wants to walk when it's hot out? It's easy to walk when the weather's cool. So if you were with me the last hundred days, which I know a lot of you were, we battled through the tough part. Now it gets easier for some. For some of us, we're gonna be going into the snow. Now I'm not used to the snow because I'm a Phoenix kid, right? But at the same time, many of you guys are used to the snow. So for some of you, the summer might've been mild and now you're gonna be walking into the more challenging time of the year. So here's the good thing. You have something going for you. You have routine going for you. You have a think tank process. You can make plans now for what you're gonna do 
when you have that nor'easter come through and all of a sudden it's frozen and you've got 45 feet worth of snow, right? And it takes you a half hour just to dig your car out of the snow. Well, you know what? If we're willing to wake up a half hour early to dig our car out of the snow, to thaw it out, to get going for work, well, then why can't we do that when it comes to taking our walk, right? Well, Jesse, now I have to wake up even earlier to dig my car out of the snow. I know this is your challenging time of the year. You got to find a time and figure a way to do it. But during the summer, that's the key, getting up that extra half hour early and getting out the door. So in my case, we breezed through these last 110 days of misery, and now I'm gonna get rewarded. My walk is actually gonna get easier, and for many of us, until it does get you know freezing cold here in the next two or three months, we have this little window where I think walking's gonna be wonderful. What do you guys think? So right now, we're on top of the world. A couple months ago, we were on the bottom of the world, right? So let's stick with that top of the world. I don't know if you guys remember this, but Sean, about two or three weeks ago, you and your wife went to go see a Colorado football game. You were really pumped about Coach Prime. You even said, hey, me and my wife, we are not alumni of, of Colorado you know, University. We, um, we are just big fans of Coach Prime great coach right now that was two or three weeks ago he was a great coach he was on top of the world colorado's ready to win a national championship all of a sudden they get uh they get it handed to them by the university of nebraska right all of a sudden they barely win against their rival colorado state and all of a sudden things don't look so peachy their two top players, this is probably their last year at Colorado. So what happens to the coach when his son and his star wide receiver go on to the NFL? Is he gonna stay in Colorado and get mediocre numbers? There's a lot of people that are thinking he was gonna make it to the college playoff this year. Well, the reality is right now, he'd be lucky if they even make a bowl game. Sometimes we are great as players, but not so great as leaders, right? Sometimes we are the most wonderful salesman or the most wonderful employee, but then when we try to be the boss or the owner of a company, sometimes we find out that, hey, that's just not our skill set. We're not nearly as good at that. We're not as talented at those things. That happens every single day. You know, you have a lot of videos where they say, hey, why don't you become an entrepreneur? Why don't you quit your nine to five and become your own boss? Well, guys, some of us are meant to be bosses in the world, but some of us are actually meant to be those nine to fivers, you know? So I just want you guys to know that sometimes you're better off just kind of staying in your lane, you know? That's the tough thing about this world. It's so easy to find yourself on top of it one day and on the bottom of the ocean, the other. And that segue, segues us nicely into our next segment. And by the way, we do wish Coach Prime success this year. I would love for his team to really catch fire and some way somehow make that college playoff. But the reality is sometimes we're on top of the world, sometimes we're underneath the ocean. And speaking of underneath the ocean, they're starting to do some hearings about the Titan submersible. I believe it was a little over a year ago that uh, a five-man crew decided they were going to go visit the Titanic uh, wreckage site underneath the ocean. So they go, and I'm sure you guys remember, all of a sudden they were lost. And it's like, what the heck happened? Well, apparently they uh, submerged into depths of the ocean that were so uh, strong and powerful, right? As you go deeper and deeper down, the forces that are pressing against you are just incredible. And apparently they were in this sub that was like, you know, at first it seemed like this miracle of science, right? Like, wow, they're able to go down and they can control the submarine with a video game controller. 
wow, what a neat thing, right? One of the uh, millionaires that paid for his ticket even brought his, what, 20-year-old son. And you're thinking, wow, what a really cool experience for, the, for a father and son to, to go through together. Well, it was the day before when they thought it was going to be successful. But it wasn't so much the minute that that thing went down. And I saw Sky News Australia where they actually show half of the wreckage down at the bottom of the ocean. And it didn't look pretty at all. It's one of those things where it's like, holy crap, what were they thinking? Isn't that funny when you hear somebody say, hey, this is going to be a successful voyage and look at all this neat technology. We're able to control this with a little video game controller. And all of a sudden everyone's like, ah, oh, that's really neat. If I were rich, I would pay that guy a quarter of a million dollars to be on that sub too. Oh my God, they are so lucky. Little did we know, hours later, they would be, they would be gone, right? That's really devastating. So again, one minute, the submersible's on top of the world. The next minute, it's at the bottom of the ocean. When it was hot outside and I was begging everybody to walk, I felt like I was at the bottom of the ocean because I very rarely got a comment from somebody saying, hey, I'm walking with you guys, right? Very, very challenging to get people to walk when it's hot. I felt like I was at the bottom of the world. Well, now that I see the weather literally changing, I'm starting to feel more upbeat about it. This is the time where you're going to start seeing people that are going to start saying, hey, I'm willing to take on your walking challenge. Hey, Venters, I'm a Venter with you. I just have a feeling we're going to see a lot more growth during the next three months than we did during the last three months. And a lot of you guys during these next three months are going to see a lot of changes in your life. This is where you're actually going to start to lose weight because when you go on your walk, you're no longer going to be wiping sweat off your neck thinking this sucks. You're going to actually start thinking, wow, the weather's beautiful. What a beautiful day. And when all of a sudden your mindset is one where you're starting to notice the beauty of the day and how good it feels outside, this is where your walking addiction and walking routine is really going to start to take hold. So again, if you guys battled through the summer with me, you're going to really fall in love with your walk over the next handful of months. Now, when it gets super freezing cold, we're going to have to go the opposite, right? Instead of wearing t-shirts and shorts, we're going to have to think about sweatpants and hoodies. We're going to have to start thinking about jackets and, and windbreakers, right? So again, plan accordingly. If you know that uh, you know, your place where you live is just famous for being six feet under snow you know, during the winter, get yourself a little room in your house where you can actually do some walking in place. Think about actually buying that treadmill if you've been contemplating it. They have things called walking pads that are a fraction of the price. You can get a walking pad for about 200 bucks on Amazon. And basically it's a treadmill that's basically just the bottom part that you walk on. And they look really neat. I haven't gotten one, but I have been contemplating purchasing one. Maybe some of you guys can contemplate that same purchase. Maybe it's time to go to Planet Fitness or whatever Vasa fitness group that you have in your area. And maybe it's time to put down some money each month and officially get yourself a membership. Remember, the walk must go on. Don't ditch your walk. Keep your walk going. Speaking of bottom of the world, I don't know if you guys heard, but apparently Diddy was arrested over the last day or two. The last thing we heard and saw from Diddy was a picture of him kind of slapping around his girlfriend in what looked like a giant hotel room, right? I'm sure you guys all saw that. I'm one of these guys that when I see people getting the crap beat out of them, I have to turn the other way. Those things just really bother and disgust me. But it was one of those things where he immediately got on and apologized for his actions. But by that time, I think it was a little too late. 
when you start to see people that you hold in a high regard and all of a sudden you start to see these negative things that they've done one after the other after the other it kind of becomes like a Bill Cosby situation where you have to ultimately say holy crap we were fooled these people aren't necessarily the best people in the world it makes you wonder why do we listen and why do we give such high regard to people that are athletes coaches and entertainers you know you might be a world-class defensive back in the NFL it doesn't mean you're gonna be a world-class coach you might be a world-class rap artist and production artist like Diddy it doesn't mean that you're gonna be a world-class human being you know you might be able to walk when it's really nice and beautiful outside you might be a world-class walker you're able to walk 25 miles a day but how are you going to handle it when the weather changes because again we have to think forward don't think backwards think forward if you're walking right now and you're losing weight and you're really loving your walk and you're not planning for that time when the weather turns well what, what's going to happen when you stop walking for two or three weeks you're gonna lose everything that you earned. You're gonna start gaining weight again. So again, right now, we are gonna be entering another season. This season is known as the fall. It's a couple of months of really beautiful weather before we hit the winter. And in, in some of these places where you guys live, like Canada, it gets really cold really quick. So again, pull out your parka, pull out your wool sweater and get ready for the cold let's do this together so over the next couple months i'm going to be like hey this is perfect weather some of you guys are going to be breaking your teeth from you know chattering your teeth because it's so, so so cold god i get cold when it's 60 degrees outside you guys are going to have to deal with you know 10 degrees above zero and in some cases 10 degrees below zero Whew. That sounds like a nightmare. So prepare accordingly. And don't try to don't try to cut corners there's gonna be a piece of you that says you know what I walk every single day now it's cold outside it's not that big of a deal if I only want to walk four or five days a week I'm still doing a wonderful job that's better than nothing and it is better than nothing but you got to remember there's a rule that we have here when it comes to walking well, it's not really a rule, it's an idea, it's a thought. And the thought is this, I've been walking a lot my whole life. When you walk four or five days a week, that's those little moments where all of a sudden the weight can creep up on you. Why? Because technically we're having two or three days a week where we're not walking, but during those two to three days a week, we're still eating. We're still sitting around. We still have a tendency to gain weight. So the reality is you have to walk every single day. I'm telling you, even if you're walking every single day and all of a sudden you cut down to five days a week, just taking the weekend off, you're going to start gaining weight on the weekend. It's not a punishment to you. Some of you won't experience that. But I'm telling you, you're going to be the unlucky one that every time you start slowing down on your walking, you're gonna start gaining speed on gaining weight, okay? So just trust me here, don't mess with it. You love your walk, don't talk yourself into walking less. This is where we have to take advantage and start walking more. For those of you that are on day four or five with me, you're brand, brand new. You might have thought your first two or three days were easy. There's gonna be a piece of you in your mind that says, hey, I now know that all I have to do 
is walk, drink water, and avoid sugar, and your mind is actually going to talk you into quitting your walking routine right here the first week. That's where you have to say no. Give us 15 to 21 days consecutively of you walking. It's very important when you're brand new. Why? If you give yourself 15 to 21 days of consecutive walking, you're actually going to become a little bit addicted to your walk. It's going to it's going to start to become a natural part of your morning routine. But there's a piece of you that wants to quit right, right now. Why? Because number one, you can't lose weight in a couple of days with this. It's going to take you about 45 to 60 days before you start to see any change on the scale. So right now is not the time to be looking at the scale and now is not the time to be quitting telling yourself, well, now I know the recipe. I'll do it next year. There is no tomorrow. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but there are young people in their 30s, in their 20s, that are dropping to the ground and losing their life to heart attacks and strokes. Now, I know a lot of times we look at that and we say, hey, I wonder if that's because of this that we all did over the last handful of years. Is it because of this medicine that we all took, right? Or could it just be that we eat horribly and we don't move? And young kids, where they, we used to always brag that, hey, young people have these great metabolisms, right? We can eat whatever we want. I think that's bullshit. Young people are fat nowadays. Why? Because they're, they act too much like adults. They want to be on their phone all day. They want nothing to do with diet and exercise. So now when I was growing up, we had fast food once or twice a week as a treat. Now kids have fast food seven days a week. The reason that we're, young, that we're skinny when we're young is not because of some magic metabolism. It's because we're active and we're moving. If you look at the pictures that I've shown up the last day or two, where we look at people from the early 1900s, they had no choice but to walk. Your horse could only take you so far. Only so many people owned a vehicle. If you wanted to get to town, you had to use your legs. And if you use your legs, you're gonna be skinny. So here's my challenge for you. Just for fun, you're already on YouTube. Look up some old vintage foot footage of, the New, of New York in the year 1900. You're going to be hard pressed to find one person that's overweight. Do you think those skinny people looked at their kids and thought, wow, you've got a super metabolism chap? No, they didn't think about that shit because they all had super metabolisms. Or did they? No, there were still some occasional chubby people back then. They were probably rich and they probably had people doing things for them. And they probably had an endless supply of money so that they could buy stuff. I put a battery in today that was only two thirds full, but I have another battery in case. I just don't want it to die. And that's the same with you. I don't want you guys to die. I want you guys to stay alive and keep moving. I think at the rate that we're going, we're going to have a situation where in the next 10 or 15 years, we're not gonna get smaller and skinnier and healthier. I think we're gonna continue to get bigger and wider and more miserable. Well, that doesn't make sense, Jesse. We have all these really good GLP-1 and some aglutide medicines coming up, and I think it's gonna be the opposite. I think we're gonna cure this. You wanna know something? The average person goes through a course of Manjaro and Wagovi, and they're off it within a year or two. And within six or seven months of them getting off of it, they tend to gain most of that weight back. So the reality is it's a big farce. And I'm predicting it right now. In the next two, three, four, five years, our, our obesity numbers should plummet. But that's not going to happen at all. Usually what happens with, uh, with human beings is the more you try to fix something, the more problems happen. 
What do you mean, Jachi? Well, think about this. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, we all grew up with diet sodas, right? The, the emergence of Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi and Diet 7-Up and Diet Mountain Dew. Man, that didn't help anybody, did it? All that created is a situation where we were more obese than ever. In the 80s and 90s, we started coming up with these fat-free cookies, right? You got all these fat-free options. That didn't help shit, did it? We have all these sugar-free options. That just made us fatter. So now we have this medicine that's gonna make us lose weight like crazy. The average person can only stay on it for a year or two. Insurances want nothing to do with it long term. And it's gonna end up like any drug, it's gonna end up having it where you have a tolerance level. So you constantly have to titrate up. Well, when you titrate up, that's when people start to have those miserable side effects. So I've been hearing these nutritionalists and these dietitians, and they're like, you know, there's a magic bullet somewhere in there. We need to keep people on these low doses. And these low doses have wonderful, wonderful effects without side effects. It's not till we up their dose. And I'm, and I'm like, lady, the reason that they up their dose is because everybody starts to plateau and they start to get the cravings back. And before you know it, your miracle medicine is not performing at a $1,000 a month cost that it is. Just like Deion Sanders. You can pay somebody 30 million bucks a year to come in and it might look like, hey, things are looking up. We got Deion Sanders in here. But all of a sudden, Nebraska comes in and they don't look like the modern day Nebraska. They look like Nebraska from the 1990s. They look like some championship team. And all of a sudden it's like, holy crap, Colorado's not gonna really be that important in the big game of things. And, I'm, and I apologize if you're a person that's not into college football, but I think you understand where I'm coming from. We've all seen things, battery change. So I'm gonna make a prediction, I've said this before, but ultimately what's gonna happen is right now we have about, what would you say, 1% of the doctors and, and, and scientists saying, hey, this is bad news. And I would include myself in that 1%, although I'm not a doctor, nor am I a scientist. I have a feeling this is gonna end up being more trouble than it's worth. What's gonna happen if that's true, and I'm gonna put an if, because I could be wrong and I hope I am. But if I'm right, what's gonna happen is in five or 10 years, when obesity does not go away, but actually gets worse, you mark my words, what's going to happen is a lot of doctors and scientists and nutritionists and dietitians that right now are giving people these prescriptions, they're going to actually be saying, hey, I came out first and I told people about the pitfalls and dangers of this medicine, but I want you guys to remember it was one or two percent. Everybody was on the bandwagon with this miracle weight loss drug. And if you guys are taking this miracle weight loss drug, I'm not against you. You still need to walk. I want you to walk with us because I think what's gonna happen is you're not gonna be able to stay on that medicine forever. And when you do get off a of medicine that you need to be on forever, you're gonna realize why when you get off of it, you're gonna gain weight again. We have to get you into a walking routine. I get so sad when I hear all these people, they lose 30 or 40 pounds so that they lose enough weight to get approved for weight loss surgery. My goodness, if you're willing to lose 30, 40, to 30 or 40 pounds to go into a surgery, why aren't you willing to lose 30 or 40 pounds for the sake of, of losing 30 to 40 pounds? It only happens for these folks when they're preparing for a surgery. That is crazy and nobody says anything about it. So again, I think what's gonna happen is, in five or 10 years, you're gonna have every single doctor and every single scientist say, hey, I was trying to ring the alarm bell. You just remember, they're full of poop. Very few of us are trying to tell people that this is bad news. And I'm hoping that we're wrong and that the scientists and the doctors are right. I'm hoping this is a cure for obesity. But what are the odds? Come on, you've been on this planet just as long as I have. 
the odds of this miracle drug actually sustaining itself and being a miracle long term are zero. No, Jesse, it's going to happen. It's at least 60 or 70 percent. No, Bob, the odds of this medication lasting forever when we already have data that most people get off of it after a year or two and they regain two thirds of that weight almost immediately and now they've lost a lot of muscle. Now that's a guaranteed failure, Bob. And if medication costs you $1,000 a month in a world where nobody can afford rent, you think that's a recipe for success? No, what it is is a recipe for rich people to buy into Nova Nordisk stock and get super rich over the next three to four to five years. And then in six or seven years when they yank it off the market, you're gonna have a situation where you're gonna say, wow, it looks like it was a giant money grab. I'm surprised people weren't smart enough to sniff that one out. So again, keep track of all these doctors and nutritionists and dietitians that sing this drug's praise. Because these are gonna be the same yahoos that talk about how they were there at the forefront trying to warn people against this. Please don't let them get away with that. If you're pro this, you need to go down with the ship because you're gonna go down with the ship. There's no such thing as a free launch. There's no such thing as a shortcut in life. You're gonna have to walk and exercise eventually. So whether you become a venter now or in two years when the medications fail you, you're gonna be a venter. And again, if you're on those medications and you are walking with us, let's lose so much weight that if you ever do have to get off those medicines, you already have a walking routine, you're already drinking water, and you're already avoiding sugar. That's how we can sustain our weight loss, even if they take away our Manjaro and Wagovi. Have a beautiful day, I'll see you tomorrow.